Hello everyone, how are you doing? This is MD Tech here with another quick tutorial. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how to resolve the bad image error status code 0xc00012f that you are experiencing on your Windows computer. So this could definitely be a frustrating issue, and in today's tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how to hopefully go about it without too much of a hassle. And we're going to go ahead and jump right into it. What we're going to do is open up the web browser. So it doesn't matter what web browser you want to use, but we're going to open up Google Chrome for today's tutorial. And you want to type in msdcp140.dll download and just search that up. One of the best sites should be from a dll slash files.com. You want to go ahead and select that. Oh, what do you know? Look, there's an MD Tech video on this subject too. So this is a slightly different video than the one I made down here, but you can see. I'm right down there so um, anyway getting back on track here we're gonna go ahead and select that you know I never get told seeing yourself in the search results so um, anyway we're going to go ahead and select the most recent download version so you can see at the time of this recording it looks like it's near the top of the list and I'm on a 32-bit machine most of you guys are probably gonna be on 64-bit so you're gonna select the 64-bit download I'm on a 32-bit machine, so that's the one I'm going to select. Most of you guys, again, are going to be 64-bit. Again, this will be based on your operating system. So you see we have a zip file here. Go ahead and just left one at one time to open it up. And we're going to go open it up in File Explorer. Select OK. And now we have this DLL file. So what I'm going to do is just hold down on my mouse cursor and just drag it over to the desktop. And I'm going to close out of here. And now what we're going to do is open up the start menu. And type in File Explorer. Best match to go back with File Explorer listed right above App. Go ahead and left click on that. You want to left click on this PC on the left side, double click on your local disk where Windows is installed on. Do the same thing now for the Windows folder. Same thing for System32. Double click on that. Please note if you don't see any of these folders you might have to click on the View tab up at the top and then select where it says Hidden Items make sure that's checkmarked in there. And now that we're in here, you want to go search for something that says msvcp140.dll. So we're going to have to kind of go down to the DLL sections here. And you can sort alphabetically. Uh, you could add other columns here too if you want to search by type. I'm actually just going to click on one of them here and just start typing what we searched for before, which is msdcp140. And you can see I actually don't have one in here. If you did, you want to go just right click on it and delete it. But since I don't have one, I'm just going to go ahead and drop the one that we had on our desktop. Just drop it into our System32 folder. Make sure it says move to System32. Make sure you're not putting it in some folder. So you can see it says move to System32. Make sure it doesn't say somewhere else. So again, make sure it's in there. Well, it looks like it actually was in here, but we're going to go ahead. It doesn't really matter. We're going to replace the file in the destination. So if you're in the same situation I'm in, that's fine. Just replace the file. No big deal. So I continue for folder permission here. Okay, and then it's been removed from the desktop. It's been put into this folder here. So then I would go ahead and restart your computer at this point. Now you probably should close out of any open programs and applications as well before you go ahead and do that. Now you could also adjust the permissions on the DLL file itself. Generally speaking, I really don't think that will be necessary and I'm really not going to highlight that in this tutorial. I think we're really kind of going down the rabbit hole at that point. You can also, you know, run a system restore point to um, as well if you're looking just for an added layer of, you know, options. And I mean, honestly, that should probably be about it at that point. So just giving you guys a couple different options to work with. So I do hope that this brief tutorial was able to help you guys out. And as always, thank you for watching. And I do look forward to catching you all in the next tutorial. Goodbye.